In today's video, I'm exploring deep into Scotland to capture some moody landscapes and magical waterways. My trip started in the stunning Cairngorms National Park. It's a beautiful region full of luscious views and amazing forest trails. Now, I've actually been to the Cairngorms quite a few times before, so I did have a decent idea of what to expect when I got there. It doesn't have quite the same wild, untamed wilderness feel of some of Scotland, in particular some of the more remote highland areas, but it's packed with locks and great forests, so there is plenty of photo opportunity to be had. Now, I was actually on holiday with some of my friends, so I didn't take my proper video camera and didn't want to be wasting their time in shooting lots of video, so instead what you're getting is me presenting this to camera now after the fact. The first scene I came across was this line of trees set against this lock. I loved the stillness of the water, creating this mirrored image of the more bare pines, which themselves stood out nicely against the more dense greenery behind them. I shot this at 70mm to focus the composition, used a polarizer to help control some of the glare on the water, and then composed my shot with the shoreline cutting right through the middle of the scene. I briefly explored a bit more of the shoreline and took a couple of snaps, which are basically fine, but don't have much of a real subject to make them stand out. They're nice memories from the trip, but I really doubt these will ever be in my portfolio. From here, I hiked further through the forest trails. I really love the footpaths through these trees. There are no cars, no planes. It's just the sound of the wind through the trees and the birds and animals all around. And there are some lovely animals to be seen around here. I find the trees themselves to be a bit too uniform to make much of a scene, but sometimes the pathway itself can make for a good shot. I do love shooting trees and I certainly love being in amongst the trees, but I've never really been very good at that deep in the forest sort of photography. I like to look out instead for those solitary trees, the ones that sort of stand by themselves on a bit of a hillside looking all wild and exposed. I find this shot here taken earlier in the trip. These caught my eye as I was driving past them on the road and I had to quickly park up to walk back and get the shot. It's the solitary nature that makes them stand out against that misty mountain backdrop. I do like this shot, but I had to be very careful with my composition when I was shooting. It looks like there's three trees. There's actually a smaller fourth one, which I felt spoiled the scene a little bit as it intersected too much with the bigger tree in front of it. Now I didn't want to have to photoshop it out, so instead I just moved my shooting position a little bit to make that fourth tree line up almost perfectly behind the tree in front of it, basically obscuring it from view. I think it's a good example of how important it can be to really study the scene in front of you, understand what you do or don't like about it, and see how much you can change before you press the shutter button. You can of course do all kinds of things with exposure and colour in post, but it's much harder to rescue bad composition, so make sure that you're absolutely nailing that when you take your shot. Further on my forest hike, I came out to this outcrop that gave a super view of a surrounding area. I like this composition with this big rock as the foreground, but I think this scene looks even better with my friend in the picture. Not only does she add a context to the size of the scene, but having a figure in the image helps add that personal element that lets a viewer connect with the image, imagining what it would be like to be in that same spot enjoying the view. 
that said, I also love this shot, using just a rock as foreground interest, leading the way into the dramatic, moody landscape beyond. After the forest walk, I headed back to ground level and explored more of the locks for interesting photos. These big boulders immediately caught my eye, and I'm quite pleased with the first shot I managed. But I also like this version, with my friends jumping across the rocks, turned into these ghostly forms by the slow shutter speed. The edit on this shot was pretty straightforward. A crop helped neaten up the composition and bring the attention more to the figures on the rocks. I brought down the highlights, boosted the shadows and applied various colour toning tweaks, including desaturating the colours somewhat to create more of a subdued look. It is a bit more of an abstract shot, but I think it adds a lot more interest to the scene overall. I also think it works pretty well as a black and white, but I can't quite decide exactly which one I prefer, so maybe you could let me know if you have a preference in the comments below. After some more exploring of the surrounding hills, it was time to leave the Cairngorms and instead head for the Trossachs, slightly further south. In particular, the Bracklin Falls, which is a beautiful torrent of water that cascades over massive boulders. I used a vertical composition here to capture more of the interesting lines and patterns of the rock in the foreground, using a slow shutter speed to blur the motion of the raging torrent beyond. It's an okay shot, but it's the bridge over the falls that's the real subject here. With my camera locked down, I tried a longer shutter speed to blur the water. The result is decent enough, but with that empty white sky above, I don't think it's a great image overall. I much prefer this shot, which I took handheld in order to hold the camera high and use some of the overhead leaves as a natural frame for the scene, which I think works a lot better than the previous one. I had to handhold the shot because I needed to get my camera above my head and using those leaves as that frame and I'm already six foot two so I was probably holding my camera at about seven feet above the ground and unfortunately my little travel tripod that I had with me does not go nearly high enough. But I was still using a slow shutter speed, probably around a third of a second, which does mean that any hand movement will just blur the whole of the scene, not just the water. Of course, it can make it very tricky to get a sharp image, so what I did was set my camera to burst mode and basically fire away lots and lots of shots, hopefully therefore increasing the chances of at least one of them being nice and sharp. It's been a great few days exploring, not just because of the photos, but to be able to finally get out and see something different. It wasn't really a photography trip, it was just a bit of a break with some friends, but like any committed camera nerd, I still went with a full pack of gear. But being with other people does mean that I didn't want to spend loads and loads of time at every scene I saw trying to fine tune an image, trying to work out exactly the composition I want, and I certainly didn't want to be asking them to wait around for half an hour or an hour while the light changes and maybe I can get an even better shot. It was instead much more of a move and shoot sort of trip, so everything was a little bit more of a, of a snap than a, a really considered image. And there's nothing wrong with that, of course. I love shooting like that, and certainly when I'm doing anything more uh, editorially for CNET, I, I Ten time tends to be against me, so I have to shoot and move pretty quickly, making sure that I'm telling as much of the story as I can in what is usually quite a short space of time. And I think taking more images on a trip like this allows you to document your holiday in a way that you probably don't if you only take three shots, but three shots that you spent hours on each. So as a result, I've actually come away with quite a few images from this trip that I'm really pleased with, and sure, they're not necessarily going to be portfolio images. I don't even know if these are going to end up on Instagram, but they're really nice shots to look back on, which is really the whole point of doing photography anyway. But now lockdown is easing up across Scotland. I am planning a whole variety of photography trips, trips where I can actually focus on taking the photos and of course actually filming some proper videos for you guys when I'm out there, you know, rather than just taking clips of B-roll on my phone and then recording this afterwards. That said though, I do hope that this has been helpful to see how I would shoot, and in particular how I would shoot quite quickly while I'm out and about like this. 
Uh, if this has been a helpful video, do please consider hitting that like button and certainly please do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. As I say, I've got some great stuff coming up. There's a lot more of Scotland that I'm yet to explore and some amazing ideas for videos uh, coming soon. So please follow along. There's loads of great stuff coming up, but I will see you next time.